Hey guys, it's Matt. Welcome to Speed Tutor. And today I'm going to show you four instances of different timers, whether that's timers in the background or ones that you can format to look as like a digital clock. And in my example, I've got this bomb in the background and we'll add more and more elements. And I'll show you how to use coroutines, update UIs and format exactly like this. So we're going to start by creating a nice little background timer. And this is something which doesn't have any visuals. It can just be if you need to count something down in the background before you make something happen within your game. We're going to start by having a serialized field private float as our countdown time and set that equal to 60 as, as it would be for 60 seconds. Then we're going to have a nice little start method and we're going to be able to start our coroutine in this time. And a coroutine is just something for Unity to pause execution and do something after a certain amount of time. So to do that, we need to make sure that we write IE numerator instead of void. And we'll just call this our countdown coroutine. And then in brackets here as the parameter, I'll just write float and time. Then we can write yield return new and wait for seconds. I'm just going to write time because we're going to specify it in the method parameter. You could just specify this countdown time up here if you didn't want to pass it through to the method entirely up to you and then i like to be able to create a method which is just to say you know we finished so we created a method called countdown finished and we could create a debug just to say that that's finished once we've finished this timer which will pause and then execute the line after and it will do our debug then to start our coroutine we just need to write start coroutine countdown coroutine and then in brackets we'll just say the countdown time and this is any way that we want to start the coroutine from anywhere else in your script or another script. We can just use this. I'll just create an empty game object and add our background time. I'm just going to wait five seconds so you don't have to wait too long. We'll hit play. And after five seconds, it appeared here and you can see that the countdown was finished and that was just purely in the background. Now you might want to create a timer which actually adjusts some time on screen. So we're going to create a simple timer which counts down from whatever we've started on every second. I've created a new script called the simple countdown timer and I've put all of this on my Patreon so you can get this entire project and all the scripts easily accessible and also on my Patreon is over 220 different scripts, assets and projects you cannot find anywhere else. So we've still got the countdown time, we want a private float for the countdown speed so how quickly it's going to happen. And then what we need to do is I've just got a header for the timer UI. We're going to say private TMP underscore text and timer text equal to null. And then you make sure that you're using TM Pro at the very top. So we're going to create a float called remaining time. This is going to be how much time we have left when we count down. So then in our coroutine, we can just get rid of the parameter from each of these things here. So we're not going to specify the time anymore. But now we're going to have that while, so we'll create a while loop, remaining time is ever greater than zero. We know that we have left or time left to count down. So in here, we're going to add our yield return new wait for seconds. And then we're just going to specify our countdown speed, which was the speed that we had at the top to how fast we want to count down. Then we need to actually say that our remaining time is less than or equal to the countdown speed. So we'll wait an amount of time. So in this case, we'll wait one second and then we'll count down or take away one second each time. So if remaining time is less than zero at any point, we must have finished. But then we want to be able to update our text that we wanted to originally. So we'll say void update timer text and we'll say that our timer text dot text is equal to our remaining time dot two string. And then I always like to put a in quotes zero to make this a whole number and then we also need to do in our start method so we need to make sure that the remaining time is equal to the countdown time at the start just to make sure that we're always above that value and then you can also update the timer to update just before we start the coroutine just before we start our countdown we also need to update our ui text in the countdown timer so every time we take something down we're going to update each second then you see when we test it we're ticking down that's all well and good if i want to count down one second each time but sometimes you may want to increase the speed at which you'll be able to count down more efficiently so at the top i'm going to create a new field called private constant flow which is going to be our base interval so we're going to always tick down by whatever this base interval is. Then in our coroutine, we're going to actually say float. Then the wait time, which we're going to set, is going to be our base interval divided by the countdown speed. So this means that 
we'll work out whatever our interval is and we can increase our speed to make it count down much faster more easily then we need yield return new wait for seconds and then in this case we're going to specify the wait time now because this is going to the shorter this period is or the faster it ticks down is the faster it looks like it will move and then we need to make sure that we always take away the base interval from the remaining time if we're just going to tick down by one second if you wanted to tick down by two seconds each time you could do that but leave it at one just increase the countdown speed so as you see here we're moving down one second every second and then you can see in this example if my countdown speed is 10 it will move much faster over the period of time now you might want to create a time formatting example it looks like a real digital clock or something like that we're going to create ourselves a brand new method and have this as a string and just call this our format time and have this as float time that we're going to specify at any time that we want to use it and then we'll say that we'll have an integer of minutes set that equal to math f dot flow to int and then have time divided by 60 because that's how many seconds we have in a minute. And if we do integer seconds equal to math f dot floor to int, we have time with a percentage sign of 60. And then we'll return the string and we'll say string dot format. And it's going to be in the format of, and we'll write in quotes, this is angle brackets and inside the angle bracket, zero colon zero zero. Then at the end of this, we'll have also a colon. And then again in angle brackets, we'll have one colon zero zero. Then we'll have a comma for minutes and a comma for seconds. And then you can see that we formatted it as this digital time. So in either case for the updating the text, then we want to say that our timer text is now equal to our format time. And then brackets, it's be the remaining time that there's ever left. Now, if I add my script, so I'm going to set this to 120 seconds and still have the countdown speed to one. You can see it started at two minutes as we expected because 120 seconds is two minutes. So now if I added the speed, a countdown speed of 10 and press play, we get a much faster bomb that ticks down over the space of time. Now I'm going to show you how to create a dynamic timer which has more effects. I'm going to make the bomb shake, add a sound effect and do some things that we can control over time. So I'm going to quickly add these examples and show you them. So I'm going to have the transform for the sprite transform to what I'm going to move, the shake intensity, and then the tick sound that I'm going to have. I'm going to have a countdown event when I want to do that specific event. And then I'm going to have a Boolean firm whether I'm shaking or not. So if we go back down to our countdown timer coroutine, I want to add a little bit of script in here that they said that if the time remaining is less than 10, then, and we'll make sure that we're not shaking, we'll start a new coroutine about shaking. And then I'll play my tick sound to make it sound like the bomb's about to explode and set shaking equal to true. So then I've created a new coroutine, which is about shaking the actual sprite object that we've got. So we're going to do a random range based on the shake intensity. We're going to transform the local position and then do it over a period of time just while we're asking it to shake. Then in my case, I'm going to make sure that I stop my ticking sound. And in this case, I, I wanted an event, which was my countdown event dot evoke. So I can do any custom events when this actually happens. And I made sure that I'm using unity.events to make that happen. So in my case, I could have 120 seconds. I'm going to get it count down pretty fast. I've got my sprite, which is the bomb. I'm going to get it shake by 0.5 on the intensity. I'm going to have a tick sound. And then when my evoke or happens and when it explodes, I'm just going to enable this flash object or this white sprite just to make sure that it looks like it's actually exploded. And then I will also have the explosion sound effect, which has got as an audio source on here. So when it actually finishes, it will actually explode and do that white effect. So as I said, this is all on my Patreon. You can get hold of it with all the projects and all the scripts and everything that you need. So be sure to check out that and get over 220 other assets and support the channel by doing so as well. Do be sure to check out all the links down below to get all the best sales savings and everything you can find in Unity and Game Dev. And a big thank you to all my patrons. Massive thank you to Peter Steiner and everybody else who comes to watch the video. So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Cheers.